What's going on guys? It is your boy and we are here. I wanted to actually do a fun little live reacts. We got two minutes until obviously I'm not going to talk for two minutes, but we're going to talk uh, and once it actually goes live, I'm going to give you guys a live reaction. I'll probably edit it maybe a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to let the whole thing just rock out. I actually don't even know how long it is, but instead of me looking at everything afterwards, at least we can look at it together and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy my reaction to everything. And uh, yeah, see you guys when the countdown's done. Really quick, I just want to read this comment. Unroll the tadpole, unclog the frog, unload the toad, inhibit the rivet, unstick the lick, unimprison the amphibian, unmute the newt, unbench oh the kench, hit the kermit, defrog here. the polywog. I love it. Oh boy. Right. Here we go. Ah, oh, he's muted. <laughs> Uh, that's something you should probably check uh, in advance. And he's laughing, that's funny. So this guy helped develop Jace, Akshan, Gwen, Kane, and Varys. So he's responsible for Akshan, Gwen, Kane, and Varys, and they're all no, kind of busted. Well, Varys is not as much, right? At least it lets us know that this is actually live, which is good. It's not a pre-recorded thing. Oh, they're just gonna skip. He helped the Alawi and Kale leave for the next two expansions. Him being in charge, or because he helped develop Alawi, I, I like Alawi's design a lot. Uh, it was a little busted, but mostly the cards surrounding Alawi, not Alawi herself. And Kale, same thing. It's the cards around Kale that are better than Kale herself. So hopefully that's that means something good. Uh, this number is very important here. Uh, the reason why it's very important is because people you want to have a lot of people interested on what's coming into the game because that's like if there's not enough people here, that's that's gonna spell ruin. <laughs> All right, let's see what they got. The kitchen sink patch. Two new cards. Are they dropping today? So I, I can't wait to theorize about the two new cards. Are they champions or are they just regular cards? Like, go hard. I could make it biggie size like this for you guys. Or do you guys want to see the chat? I'm not streaming. So I'm leaving it like this so you guys can possibly see the chat. Maybe how they react to certain stuff. I think that, that would be kind of cool. But, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll biggie size it. Come on. Bring it home. Let's nerfs. Talk about the nerfs. Okay. And this is the first nerf. Link, do you want to give us a little more context? About Lowering her attack. attack. Oh, yeah. and her defense. I don't really care about their actual thing of it. <laughs> what they are pinging on. Uh, so they nerfed the attack and defense of, of Katarina uh, in her higher level. That's kind of... Obviously, that allows you to kill her, right? She actually dies to, obviously, Mystic Shot. She obviously dies to Hate Spike. There's a ton of spells that she can now die. So you actually have... That makes her more of a liability to just drop on three and then it can be answered. Uh, more of, you know, pink focus decks are gonna be, ah, she, that, that might kill her actually. She might be completely dead because of that. She'll still be fine if you don't run ping, yeah. There was a video, um, Sunny just did did a video kind of detailing oh, the, yeah. the <laughs> That's, of that's Katarina actually funny. Katarina's <laughs> oh, see, I, I gotta see, cause Sunny's in the chat. So, <laughs> when I saw that this was coming, I was like, oh See, gosh. he's I, in the chat. That's funny. How, I wonder how it's going to shake out once once it's actually yeah. live. Yeah. Don't call me out. <laughs> I mean, it's a funny thing. That's that funny as hell, though. I think this is one of the most worked on cards in the history of lore. We tried so many ways to to get her relevant originally, and none of them were really all that good. Some of them were stronger than us. Interesting. I, I want to pause it there. Well, I'm not, I can't pause it because it's live. But I, I find it interesting that they were trying to make her relevant. Uh, I wonder if they'll do that for other cards as well, like trying to force units to be strong. So they succeeded with Katarina. Katarina found her way into the meta, found her way in the top decks. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Quietus. Yeah. So uh, Quietus's change um, is closer to a, a bit of a rework. Uh, so instead of adjusting the power Whoa. Power now... Uh, Kills units with a is it louder in here? Stats. Boom. So as he's saying that, I already get it. So Victor can't die to this because his total stats is six. Uh, it still works pretty good with freezes uh, if you want to run with a freeze, but it, it definitely keeps a lot of cards safe. Obviously, it saves all the formidable units as well unless they take damage. So that's very. I think that that's fine, honestly. But it's gonna make it the card is gonna be more useless. Five. Interesting change though. Yeah, freeze and yeah, and oh, that's a good point. That's actually a good point. Uh, if something takes damage, it will become quietable. Smart. That is that's a really cool change. But 
it got nerfed to hell, so people are gonna just remove it from their deck. They're not gonna think about it too much. <laughs> That's what people do. What? Four cultists instead of three. So this is, I don't, like I care what they say, but I'm more just like live reacting to it. Uh, this is, I wouldn't say it's irrelevant, but it's, it's one of those things where depending on the match, it will seem, cause a lot of times you're not like, you're playing a curve of Kane anyway. And since it's four, like you usually are playing Kane on five. So getting him on by the fifth cultist is fine. If you curve out well, if you curve out a little crappy, then yes, you don't get your auto Kane. So it might be a little bit, it might hurt a little bit, but like a pure, like uh, the, the cultist deck, I think where Kane is, I think he'll be fine. I think this is fine. It just makes it that if you don't high roll, like get a good curve, you your Kane deck is a little bit weaker. That's all. That's perfect. I don't need to explain it. <laughs> as soon as I see it, if I if I don't understand it, then I'll, I'll definitely look into that. Um, this is perfect because it's three different. So what people were doing, um, where they were spamming, uh, spamming like, uh, like like let's say the blood letters, you just keep spamming it. So this one, at least you need to do blood letter. Um, I might have to listen to it, but this one, I don't know if you have to do blood letter, you know, Harazi and then the other one, or does it have to be actually three different in total? So. So, uh, I'm assuming know, that's what it means. So like, you have to go heart blood letter sure into staff. Enough, but this seems like the right incremental push um, for now. Yeah, one of the things, okay, I, I really like that I get to, I get to talk to them pre-show. I like that. This is actually them. About. They left us here one by of the accident. What was so cool was you guys mentioning how, like, uh, the goal isn't to get rid, like, completely demolish Aatrox and Kane. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's never to just, like... Delete the yeah, that seems fine. Kind of the only the problem there is, is that obviously, like, you have to draw into your other Darken. Yeah, I don't you have to draw into them, right? So, like, if you don't well, get to draw that, into that's, that's thing. three things, you don't get right Aatrox. Now, so, we have a lot more that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a little crappy. And just really quickly, it's also gonna mean that you're gonna you might need to run like when you're doing the cane aspect, you need to run those cards that draw aspect, draw prospect or whatever, tempting prospect. Then maybe, but like you actually might have games where you won, won't get cane, and you won't get Aatrox. So it's gonna be a little bit more high rolly, unless they make a card that that allows you to make that easier to do, like a two mana tutor, two cost tutor. Here we go. Summoning Aegis and summoning Joral consider two different dark oh that's even a good that's a real good question actually just Joral inhabiting they, the they're they're considered the same card in general so yes has technically my nord uh deck will be good all right Link, you want to talk about Ooh! <laughs> that's actually a crazy change uh this this means that you can't uh use it as a battle tool that's pretty much all that means <laughs> you have to pre-commit it uh you also you just can't use it as a spawn two for to block yourself uh, for aggro or even for blocking uh, that's basically what happens when they turn something from burst to focus I think that's the whole reason why they even created focus to begin with it's just to nerf burst cards to make it that you have to commit to them a little bit uh, before you attack or something like that so cool I want to make it a little more cutting. yeah in general like burst speed blocking is a pattern that we try to avoid or at least there's not many cards in the game that can burst speed like block being attached to draw to clearly over so i really like this deck or attack it, yeah, it also works with attacking too that are they're very worried for allowing a chat but i want to reassure you guys wait wait until wait until we get to the end it's coming allowing buffs yeah that, that way oh then, then they buffed her i made a couple good allowing decks so i'm hype yeah okay Jinx just one mana one, uh, one damage off the nexus this is pretty obvious it just allows it to not be too much of a, a nuisance really which is cool. I mean, that's a fine change. It's, it doesn't do too much. As long as she still generates the rocket upon thing. I wonder if they're going to do other things like maybe lower get excited or something like that. Like, so we'll see if they're going to do some additional changes. But this one's pretty obvious. I like this also, these little jokes that they put here. Let me nitpick. Let me nitpick. I really think that they could have at least took the extra effort to like, uh, uh, what is it, to uh, chroma these out. <laughs> I do that. You guys see my thumbnails. I, it takes it takes a little bit to mask them out, but like I think they could have did that. It's a little weird to see like the little edges here. It's very quick. Take a square. It's a rect like a rectangle. Boom, and you get the card. But because if they want to hit Jinx, they'll take away her draw, her draw power. I, I'm curious. I'm curious. Would you guys mind if she auto generated the Mega Death Rocket every turn, but she, she loses a draw too? Would you mind that? Because the draw two is kind of what helps her get the you know helps her out a little bit. 
but like you then lose a bunch of tempo and then it's easier to like kind of kill off but she always generates this every turn curious uh oh inflation catches up to the poros one mana that uh that hurts that hurts a lot actually again not much to say about it it's just to make it a little bit more awkward same thing they did with the ride of the calling uh to the one that gets the champions from shurima it's just to make it a little more uh cost more and it makes me wonder like when i make my stony suppressor deck when they increase the cost of certain uh spells i wonder how strong stony suppressor comes and makes things a lot more awkward for uh players it's similar to uh the battle city story card now too <clears throat> the battle city story card is a one cost and then he gives you three poros this one is discard one and then get two poros so but the, the, the Poro card is in a Banal City, though. It's a Banal City card. So they're, they're nerfing it because of the, their elusives, that's why. Okay, I guess. So those are all nerfs. So those are all the nerfs. Okay. Not a fake out slide. I promise. Okay. How, how are we buffing Alali? You want to you wanna take this, Blink? So... Yeah, so the first is a pretty mild change, although she becomes a pretty... pretty... So she can't be quiet as is anyway, regardless of anything, because her, her stats are too much. They gave her one power back. I think, is she currently... Yeah, she's currently a 1-6. So yeah, they buffed her back to one attack, which is... It'll just make it easier for her to do things. That's fine. I like that they keep her health, so she has a really good health line. There we go. This this Nagakaboros change, um, it just plays so much more nicely. It, it's... I would say that's really good because it is you get two drop. immediate you get to spawn um, two immediately it is so much nicer that if you have your tentacle up to 10 and you drop it like go ahead you you've earned it at that point um, very satisfying I have whoa are they saying is that how it reads so if you already buffed up the tentacles what they're saying so if it has if it gets to 12 you get that immediately that's strong as shit i'll tell you that right now oh that's strong. oh 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 no. Oh lord. Okay, Alawi's busted his shit now. Cause that, that's a buff to her champion spell. When you buff a champion spell, like how you buff Udir, even though you don't see Udir, right? You don't see Udir. Uh, but Alawi's tent uh, tentacle smash, like her, 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 this card is busted. And now you could actually play Naga Kabor. Oh my god, that's so strong. So how does Forge, how do they buff Forge? They just buff his attack and defense? That's irrelevant. Um. <laughs> That's cool. Whatever. All right. So let me tell you guys what I, I I wish that they did. Every time he attacks, he forges every freaking thing. If every equipment on the board gets forged, that's how it should work. Let me know if you agree, because that would make him super strong. I like his Ender. I mean, he was probably a little too small for a seven drop, so we wanted him to really have board impact when he hit. That's he's not small for a seven drop because he's supposed to be copying a big equipment. You know, uh, like that's uh, you know, him. His stats is almost irrelevant, and he's not to like when you lowered his uh, damage from ten to eight. I you're insinuating that you want him leveled to, beforehand based off of a strong equipment. That, so this this you change know, makes no I sense to me. What else? Okay, so you got more health. That I turns into a two three. I guess that's see. This is the problem with forge and the, the equipment archetype right you have to get the equipment <clears throat> and then you have to, to play it on a unit and then you have to forge it with another uh, thing so the ones where like it auto forges are cool and i think that they need to do more of that or maybe cards that generate double forges or something like that i think that's what they need they needed something to make it ramp quicker so it's a it's a more aggressive <clears throat> but they don't do that so like or at least they haven't done it so far so i think that this archetype is still relatively weak forges twice boom See, I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. This is what they need. Forge twice, heal the unit, and plus three. They need more cards to forge twice. They need more ways to generate uh, multiple forges and stuff like that. They need to basically make the equipment absolutely busted. They even wait, need ways maybe to make the equipment cost less so it's easier to, to switch it around. Because that's what you basically want. Like You kind of want to be able to like put it on multiple units, switch it, turn it around. Shares these is the only card that does do that. But I think that that should have been more of it, uh, more instance there. Let's see what the champion updates are. Okay. Maokai? Maokai. So he got more. Uh, so why are they... What, what's the purpose of that? He doesn't attack anyway. So, like, if, if you do... And he doesn't block, usually, either. So, they gave him more attack, so he doesn't die to Quietus. And, like, it's... So, if he blocks once, he'll die to Quietus. But it's it's just weird. It's, it's, it's very weird to... They did say minor, to be fair. But it just doesn't seem like it's relevant. I think they should have gave him regen. 
Like, I think they, they like characters like him need more. Like they they need keywords. Like these random champions need more keywords to help with the keyword soup, but also so he can block. He like Maokai in League of Legends is a super tanky, <clears throat> super self-sustaining character, and he only gets it when he's leveled up, which is like after you did like a jillion things. So he has overwhelm. That's smart. But then that that then the light of Akathia is garbage. <laughs> the light of Akathia is basically um, the dark and harp. But it, it gives you no attack, if I'm not mistaken, right? They need to buff the Light of Akathia or give him, like, double attack. I actually wouldn't mind it, though, if they changed that. That would be a good change. But that just makes no sense to me. See the next change. Okay. This is actually the more exciting Jax change. And it's something that, like, a lot He's like, this is the actual Jax change. So, Roar of Akathia can now be a weapon, is a weapon master card. Cool. The fish fight gives Jax some native interaction. Wait, Fish Fight is currently not a... Okay, hold on. Is Fish Fight currently not a... a I thought it was. It is not. Holy crap. That is a huge buff for Jax. That's insane. Jax finally good. Jax, Jax OP, Jax OP. Jax Orn. Will Light of Ikathia still have Overwhelm as well? Yes. It's still garbage. It's still garbage. Like, it should have gave another thing. Because, like, you're not passing the Light of Akathia. And plus, if you summon another Jax, Jax is going to automatically freaking equip the Light of, or the light of Akathia. So it's stupid. Oh, wait. Uh, 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 all right. Do you, you want to talk about this? Base guy? impact. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's talk about Jax. <laughs> what is that good for freaking Void Gate? What are we doing here? I like that change for Jax, those two cards, is because I actually played the Roar of Akathia. And it's really good after you forge. So they just basically are, are which is kind of scary. They're basically force buffing that deck, that archetype, which is Orn and Jax. But I don't know if they really work outside of those two decks, or archetype of buffing a thing and then giving it to something else. I don't even know if you can go Weapon Master Aatrox. That, could, that might be a thing too. But we'll see. We'll see. What's the, what are they talking about, Tristana? This is very minor. The problem still dies the quiet as someone says in chat <laughs> that's actually funny but they're not people aren't gonna run quietest because they got dirt and people don't like to do math so myself included i'm gonna mute it again because i want to say something is that them actually retroactively making cards something is actually very strong it makes me interested will they retroactively make something dark and retroactively make something cultist uh that that could make a lot of decks super strong like very quickly very easily by them changing how or removing it like to remove a card from a specific deck is actually really strong uh and as you can see we're getting close to 3k this number needs to get as high as possible i'm just telling you it needs to be as high as possible you need to have as many people interested in what's going on in this game because if i were to show you is this it lc yeah this is rebroadcast, right? So people would rather watch um, the rebroadcast of League of Legends of a game that they probably already know the winner of um, than watch a brand new live what's coming next into this game. So they they definitely need to uh, market Runeterra more, in my personal opinion. Rise. Oh, Rise. Wow. <laughs> Talk about that's rise. so good actually i want to listen to what they say for this one i'm interested because reveals all spell mana can be used in so many different ways this change is not a uh and it's not partially because as when you add it makes no sense to have just two when you add cards you're adding a lot of power to rise you know that there's some things coming for rise uh-oh so we're and you know, getting comboed out is a little, you know, alternate win conditions can be a little nerve-wracking depending yeah. on how they play out. We've seen this in Fable. Yeah, they have to be very careful with Rise. Fiora, when she was, like, kind of oppressive. So, so there's a lot of nerves. But on the other hand, we do know that Rise needs some love. Uh, this might be too much love, but you all can decide. Um, uh, it doesn't uh, really do anything. John, uh, I'm more concerned of Rise. I, I'm concerned with non-rise decks like they're gonna put the world ruin and then maybe have a way to keep playing it over and over again and then utilize this in a different way that's my concern any rise buff is too much really uh shadow shift oh making it cheaper eh i don't think you main the main deck the card it's nice for zed though i don't think you main deck the card though as you guys know i played a decent amount of recall decks within the on the in the channel so a two mana recall that also puts a unit out could make me it makes me kind of think of like uh nora a little bit of nora support because it's a created unit uh alessandra out of the deep uh, advances oh oh whoa, whoa, whoa. summon a frozen thrall and advance it too so hers automatically just goes 
to six, right? Because they, uh, no, it's actually not six. Hold on. So the countdown is nine. She brings it down to seven. Are there any more Freljord buffs, though? So they buffed Lissandra and then Orn. This doesn't do anything. Lissandra Black Flame. <laughs> yeah, it's only the single throw. But it is interesting because uh, the, the Ionian deck has been popular, right? If they wanted to change it so it works better, that she would advance all of them by two. Which I think that that would be a proper buff, by the way. Try breaking his flow now. Oh, allied Master Yi's have done 12 damage. So Master Yi is Pike now. Makes me wonder if they'll do uh, like a, a equipment-based deck for Yi. Uh, like either with the equipment and stuff, like something to keep him alive, or strikes so you can just get strikes just to level him up in general will be really, really strong. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, so you know what's funny? Someone just hit me up uh, a, a comedy and they asked me, hey, you want to try out this dragon deck? And I'm like, eh, dragons. So now 16 plus damage. Shavana could be, again, and this is basically what they're saying is that the it's drawing these champions late. It, it's too hard, especially in the meta that's, that's going around right now. But Shyvana will be definitely much easier to level because if you have any early earlier game dragons that were doing some work, then that's super easy. That's super fine to do. And now you have more access to the striking strike. This is insane. Oh, they're saying okay. So before it was I've seen twelve damage. Um, so it just kind of it kind of depends. They need to level they level need to make it go up. They will be. Hold on. I'm just gonna pause it. Switch it over to Runeterra. Just think of cards like Dragon Chow. <laughs> like, like dragon chow these dragons getting kind of a little bit bigger earlier like i and then uh they have this the, the box thing that's it like there's there's gonna be games where it's gonna be so much easier to to actually get her out so if you but she, i'm pretty much if you draw her late she's gonna be leveled as long as it's a somewhat dragon deck is basically what that means which is kind of not they are definitely making some good interesting changes that are gonna keep us content creators busy but yeah very interesting i i do think so like, the guy that was asking that for Renekton, I think that they should, maybe, maybe they should. Take away the I've seen from a lot of characters, because it just makes it annoying. So, oh, it's kill five costs. Oh! Here they are. <laughs> and die on six. I like that. She's, she's a one five. She's currently at two six, so she's going to a one five five cost. She still has to get 11 power. And the summon buff hits herself, where before was only other allies. So basically, she becomes a 2-5 as soon as she's dropped, regardless of what's going on. So they just allow you to pair early. Now, she does take Mahita's spot, right? But a lot of the times, Mahita's sometimes not safe to play anyway. So I, I think that works out just fine. But what's cool is that you could actually play Purifying Flames now on Curve into Kale. So I, I like that a lot. Yeah, she doesn't have the same impact as Aatrox to beat for 6 boss. I agree. But I like how they put Quietus in like everything. Like, yeah, Quietus isn't gonna work on this character anymore. So the big buffing of decks, like just big units, uh, Quietus can't do anything. So Quietus is probably gonna be dropped. Lucian. One cost Lucian. This is a dangerous change. <laughs> this is this is super because you could play him on turn one and then right into the the, the 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 three things. You can have him leveled very quickly. I wonder if Black Flame Lucian could be a thing. Or, or Gwen, Gwen Lucian. <laughs> Chat probably looks nuts. W Azir Lucian. That was an old school cooking. deck. What? Some people are just spamming letters. <laughs> Azir Lucian. <laughs> Lucian Azir. Too Lucian Cannon. Oh, no. Lucian Senna. Lucian no, Cannon. No, 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 no. Quiet is question mark question mark. Uh, I. Yeah, but you can just buff him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are saying insane. Rip one, it. one buff. Yeah, this like, is. Like you this can't play Quiet. Is it? You, chat. Uh, <laughs> quiet is sharing <laughs> mana with Fizz <laughs> and Cannon is so weird. <laughs> Oh Once my! Again, hate, hate that's insane. We've, we've been they, they this is games? not gonna stick. <laughs> this is not going to yeah, stick. Man. That is too good. That is too good for Shadow Isles. I'm sorry. That is insane. Don't just. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> Kill a unit. Deal three to a unit. You can target your own stuff, which is nice. Uh, and then summon a husk. That is. Stupidly good. God. <laughs> I, you can't validate that. That is that is too good. Especially with the Lucian buff. Especially with Lucian. I, I, I could see Lucian, uh, what is that, Demacia, Evelyn becoming really strong. Um, yeah. God. God, yeah, Eve Lucian, someone says it in the chat. That's so strong, dude. God, that's strong. I judge you too small. Cost one. Wait, what? Oh, it's four costs. 
but they reduced to seven to a follower. I like seven to a follower though. Now, weight of judgment is in uh, the Shreem and Telstone, so you, like it's easy to have access to it. So maybe that's why they did it. But I did like that it did a lot of damage to a follower. It's not bad, but it's not it's not good. It's not like oh my god, let me main deck that card. It's just for Telstones. Oh no, I had a lot of fun with this. That was I know you guys. Um, <laughs> Didn't like the video. I think it's because of the thumbnail. It was too weird, the Parappa the Rapper thing. But Dragon Caller and uh, the Eye of the Dragon and the Flow deck, this is it's, it's in, insane. So making this a little bit cheaper, and if you get the Gleam Glade Lookout to make it a four cost, if it's in the hand, yeah, you're, you're yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this card you're going to see a lot. And it's very easy to keep Flow activated in a lot of decks. So, yeah, you just have a... Uh, blocking elusive or an attacking elusive almost every turn. Yeah, there we go. Whoa, no one uses this card, but that's interesting. Yeah, he's supposed to end the game, but Jace decks are just trash, in my personal opinion. But the duplicating of them might be something. I don't know. Eh. Oh boy, here we go. Were people theorizing what the new cards could be? Let's see. Is it a champion or is it just regular? I think it's regular cards. I'm sure it's just regular oh cards. I, I'm curious if they can guess what. Here. I'm keeping the chat up for this one. The region. Do you guys want to try to guess a region? Guess the region. I actually don't remember the region. This makes me want to do like a slow review. Shadow Owls. No, review. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just like um, one, it's one of them is going to be Freljord because they just buffed the fuck out of Freljord. All right, let's, let's and then maybe it. Targon. Okay. Oh, they did do Shadow Owls. That's insane. Okay. So no. Who wants to who wants to talk about this? Yeah. What? So um, no. Yeah, we have, we have this piece of auction, and now this is the one that just had like yeah, like Callista or or this is also good for the Eternal Knight as well. And it's kill an ally. They might they should pay to change that to follower. Yeah, Anivia can. <laughs> People are already Anivia. Yeah, play it on a shark chair. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're thinking about. This also, um, this also for me, this is really good for if you want to spread out the Undying. Uh, this is also good for Nora. Nora can really utilize this as well. That's two free for three mana, two things. And it is slow. So that is one thing. But yeah, the Kaiza OTK. Oh shit, that is another thing. Whoa! Sharima. Kill all followers. Castigate. So they get their, um, they get a Ruination. But it's only followers, not champions. That's pretty cool, though. Now, when do these cards come into the game is the question. Seven mana ruination, but it's not a ruination. The, the champions will stay alive. Round four ruination. <laughs> and that's where I'm out. Um, I don't play Path of Champions anymore. Uh, like, yeah. Which is cool, because I remember when they were doing the champion reveals, and it was, like, really weird. I actually think that they should have probably let off with the Path of Champions changes because now they're going to lose views now um, and things like that. So while this is going on, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. Um, pretty good changes. Uh, the two cards, like I said, that, that Ephemeral card, there's going to be so much use of that. It's a really good solid card. It is slow speed. So it's not burst, which I think makes it a lot more, like, that makes it very balanced. The other one is a nice card, Shirima. I don't think necessarily we'll run it. Maybe off a one-off after, like, making really good stuff. But they didn't get any real buffs or changes to Shirima. So Shirima's just kind of chilling. Uh, the Lucian buff is insane. Kale is interesting. The, uh, the the other card in Ionia. So pretty much you're going to see a lot of people messing around with those new cards. I think uh, Lissandra's still going to be riding the bench outside of that one uh, Turbo Watcher deck outside of that. I don't think anything's really going to go fast because you don't even care. Those decks is crazy because Lissandra, which is, I think that they missed the ball on that. People don't care about the Frozen Thralls anymore. So they needed to make it more impactful. I think they should have got a lot more greedy to make Frozen Thrall one of the decks to play. It's like, it's not even like a, a, a you know how there's some decks that people play where it's like, oh, that, I kind of like that. I kind of will play it. It might get a win. Like Frozen Thralls are just dead. They killed it. So. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I think that they did a good job of mixing it up. Uh, Shyvana decks are going to be around. People are going to be testing stuff out, and then we're going to see, you know, once the dust settles, what's good. And that will hopefully keep them going until the next big patch when they start revealing big, big things and uh, new champions and stuff like that. So I'm really hoping that it 
you know, I'm really hoping that this will help people because I know that a lot of content creators in the Rune Terror space were getting bored. They were very vocal about being bored. They didn't like, eh, I don't know. Grappler is doing like <laughs> the same deck six times. I don't blame him. Cool deck though, uh, his uh, Brom Nora. But like, I think that, you know, a lot of people are waiting for something new to kind of come in. And that's what, that's the nature of live service games. We're always looking for the new, the next, the new next best thing, right? So hopefully that's all. Hopefully they don't, they don't throw a, a wrench in my plans. If they do, I'll add it in, but pretty sure they're not. So I'm going to be out of here and I'll see you guys in the next video. I got something cooking up and it depends on when this thing is live. So when are this live? Hopefully they tell us and then I'll add it somewhere. I'll put it in the description actually, probably. There we go. Boom. Done.